All right, welcome everybody to our newest edition of Stogie 411. As you can see, my partner in crime, uh, Michael Williams, is over there with us. Uh, how you doing today, Mike? I'm doing great, buddy. How's it going? Oh, it's going, it's going just wonderful over on this end. Yeah. Uh, I know you're a little under the weather, so yeah. I'm glad you uh, staking it out. Yeah, just, just a little wife came home from work sick today, too, and I, I don't know what it is. Both got the bug, but uh, go ahead, Mike. Tell, tell everybody who the, the awesome gentleman well, in our video is. Absolutely. Well, everybody, uh, we have uh, none other than Mr. Abe. And Abe, I'm not even going to attempt, buddy, to say your last name because I will butcher the hell out of it. So I'm it's not really, attempting it. It's really phonetic, brother. It's da bab na. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but it looks you terrible, I know. <laughs> if you don't know Abe, uh, then uh, you obviously haven't been out in the cigar world long. Abe is the man behind smoking, and uh, we're going to find out all about that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Kiss My Ass Radio. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some new things you got going on on your site, Abe, that we, we heard came out, and uh, whatever else you want to talk about. So sit back for the next hour. Have your questions ready for Abe. And uh, let's get this uh, biatch on the road. So, uh, Abe, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself who may not know you, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. Um, I started this cigar. I started getting the cigar business back in Chicago. I'm originally from Chicago. And about uh, in 1994, 95, I started distributing cigars, putting them. Yeah, I was always a big fan of smoking them. But I noticed them started getting popular right around the boom, 96, 97. And um, I started putting cigars in uh, country clubs, bars, restaurants, basically anybody who I thought could sell cigars. And it was a pretty good gig. And um, about in 97, 96, 97, uh, I had the opportunity to move down to Florida and uh, started to smoke in. And uh, we started that back in 97. And um, you know, today we're uh, opening up our 10th store uh, as we speak so uh Congrats. it was a long road but fun road and uh ups and downs and seen a lot happen over the industry over the last 15 years it's been amazing oh well congratulations on 10th store man that's nice that's awesome yeah it's gonna be a, it's actually it's gonna be a new corporate headquarters it's in boynton beach and um we're actually doing a one in vero so it's good by then this year we'll have 11 locations but the new corporate store will be in boynton beach and um, it's going to be a 5,000 square foot store, mm -hmm. full liquor, and uh, we're actually building an in-house studio, so we're actually going to be doing the KMA show, the Kiss My Ash radio show, live from the shop every Saturday. No which kidding. We thought, yeah, we thought it would be really, really cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. doing from live audience of cigar smokers, and then whatever guests we have on there, you just hang out and have a nice little mini event right after the show. So Sweet, great idea, really good. Yeah. Wish you nothing but success with yeah, that, Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Now, uh, yeah, I had in my notes about uh, nine stores. Didn't know about the, the 10th and 11th coming up, so that's pretty cool. Um, I Well, Boyden's been, on our, Boyden's been on our website. It's the new corporate, and Vero's one that we just started putting together a couple months ago. And cool. I think that could be it for a while. I think it take a little break from uh, details. <laughs> opening up more stores. Now, Busy do you man. see uh, all your stores are in Florida? Do you see opening up yeah. satellite stores anywhere in the country, or do you want to keep it local? You know, it, it's it's really a task staying on top of everything um, because one thing my clientele could talk about is they pretty much will get the same experience whether they're going into my store in Port St. Lucie, which is my furthest north store right now before Vero or in Margate. And um, we have a really good team of people. I go around and make sure everything's on top. And when you get out of state, you just make it that much harder. So at the current time, I, I don't have any plans to venture outside the state of Florida. But, you know, somebody told me uh, six years ago I'd have 11 stores. I'd tell them they were on crack. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now, so, and I this, read on your website. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Did you have something? No, I'm just looking in the chat. Someone's saying that your volume's much louder than mine. I'm assuming I'm number two. I'm not sure. Maybe my wife says I'm number two, but maybe <laughs> maybe it means you. Maybe it means me. I don't know. But uh, one of us is friggin' louder than the other person. But uh, wow. go ahead. Go with your question. All right. Well, hopefully that that might have fixed the volume there. Let me let me know in the in the chat. Uh, I did want to ask Abe. I saw on your website. Uh, I read your little, uh, I guess, on your about page about the internet sales, and you were reluctant to go into the internet sales at first uh, because of the 
you know, the one-on-one connection and everything else. And could you explain to people? Yeah, you know, it's really, really funny. I mean, being in Florida, especially back 97, 98, you know, or late 90s, very, very seasonal, especially when I had my first store at Tequesta, which is a very seasonal area. And a lot of our patrons went up north, and everybody told me, you need to get an internet business. Yeah, everybody's selling online. And, of course, you know, to be Johnny come lately in the internet scene is, who wants to be that, you know? Yeah. It's an uphill battle. You're fighting everybody who's already been out there and made a name for themselves. And what I really enjoyed about our, my experience of being in the retail business was my personal relationship and camaraderie that we had with our clientele. So very few people know this, but the person who really banged it into my head and really forced me literally to do it, made me do it, was Jonathan Drew. Wow. Uh, yeah, we were sitting in my back office in West Palm. And he kept telling me, you, 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 you got to do it. You got to do it. So, you know, you, so he's not that hard. He gave me the whole thing and how to get it done. And uh, yeah, that was my Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> that, was that was pretty good. good. <laughs> So, um, and uh, he talked me into it, and I'm really, really proud to say, and if you ever get a chance to scope through our testimonials, man, um, we've accomplished making a, a successful, nice volume online store and still giving everybody who we deal with the experience of not just buying online. Um, if you read the testimonials, they all talk about how how unremarkable they feel the customer service is. And we actually tell our clientele, we don't mind if you decide to call. We'd rather have a conversation with you and let you know what's new and yeah. what's come in and what's going on, you know. But we, I, I think we've done a successful job. I don't know if you guys see our um, our hot weekly deals. Yep. There's always some parody involved, and my head's always slapped on a leprechaun or Easter bunny or some political figure of the moment. The mailman. Yeah, I mean, we just try to keep it fun. And as long as you can keep fun in the game, we were happy to do it. So knock on wood, I think we were very successful. And I said, you know, we may not have the most profitable or the biggest volume website, but mm -hmm. I can honestly say from my heart, I think we have the best. So I'm happy with that. That's good. Yeah, I will say in the chat room, Abe, uh, it, it, you know, the consensus is that the customer service is impeccable. And that's what we're seeing in the chat room right now. Everybody's raving about your your chat, your uh, customer service, and uh, we have your chat, we have your uh, website up over here on the other computer running. And, uh, it's pretty impressive. I, I will I will say that. It's the one thing that I harp on everybody who works for me. You know, everybody who comes in has got to leave with a positive experience. Yeah. They don't leave with a positive. Experience. Now, listen. Granted, nobody's got a hundred percent success rate. Right. Nope. You always get that one guy who's just falling off the wall and there's nothing you could do but you do your best but you got to have as close as you can to being perfect and making sure that you solve everybody's problems it's always solvable any problem solvable and um you really try that and in fact we had a situation not long ago uh where there was a mix-up happened six months ago and you know the guy before we can even finish solving the problem for him charged back his charge all right, so now the guy's got his money back. Obviously, there's nothing left I can do for right, him. Right. Six months later, he posts a negative review or a negative comment. And I think it was on Half Wheel. So I said, you know, I didn't know who it was. So I said, look, if, if um, it, it, you know, I, I'd really be interested to know what your situation was. You claim you had a bad experience, you know. And the guy told me what his situation was. And it was obviously a miscommunication of sorts. And he recognized he may have jumped the gun being new to us and not realizing that certain things take time because his package had got lost but shown delivered. Mm. You know? Okay. We ended up sending him a box of cigars anyway after the fact. You know? And listen, if you stay in touch and you talk, you work anything out. So mm. we really try to, you know, you buy a Monte Cristo or a Davidoff or a Padron from me, you're going to get the same stick from every other guy. But if we can make your experience all that much better and all that much more positive, you'll remember us and you'll come back. And that's Absolutely. that's a fun now, now, Abe, do you see is, is it all, if you have issues such as that on your site? It seems like you're the guy who's taking care of it, or is, that's what it sounds like to me. So they're getting right from the top; they're getting their problem resolved right away. They're getting the problem resolved right away. Every email comes through me, okay. So I see it. So if I don't personally deal with it, I'm making sure that somebody's dealing with it right. I mean, there's there's typical ones like right now we got Solaris. 
pre-orders going on, and guys are getting free T-shirts, and guys are sending email. Oh, I didn't realize I could pick a size. I'm a two X, not a large. Can you? So you know, my guys see that and they can handle it. They don't need me to tell them, hey, did you get that guy's shirt right. size? Absolutely. But sometimes I'll see one that comes across it's more sensitive or a little more issue, and I'll either consult with my guys or I'll handle it myself. But I see everything that comes through the company as far as a complaint, good or bad. You know, good. even a positive remark. That's you have to stay on top of it. You know. Absolutely, it's a business. You're running a business. Right? It's your name. You know, so you gotta. You know, it's it's funny. You know. We send every letter, <laughs> we send every package we send with a handwritten letter. Okay, it's written by somebody, a thank you note, right. you know, thanks for business, you ever be of service, let us know, whatever yeah. it is, you know. If we're sending it to a guy in Chicago in the middle of winter, we'll write, hey, stay warm out there, you know, whatever. So I used to do every one personally in the beginning. So anybody who mailed it got a handwritten letter from me. Then it got to the point in the day where there were just lines of letters, and I, okay, this has got to change. <laughs> so, so then I only wrote letters to every new customer, right. uh-huh. you know, not repeating ones. Then I got to a line where there was a long line. Of, so now there's like four or five of us, and we all write letters. Now. There you so, go. <laughs> but everybody still gets a handwritten letter from us if they order from us. Oh, that's good. That's a nice personal touch. It and is. I, I, there's not too many online uh, people that I know of that do that. I'm going to tell you something. That's the number one, if you read through our testimonials, that's the number one thing that blows away uh the consumers so like are you kidding me in today's age getting a handwritten letter it's unprecedented yeah. but that's the experience we want we want it like they walk through into our stores we know who you are right. and you know it's funny is when they call us sometimes and you know for either a question or something they're like hey mr so-and-so like, they're shocked that we recognize who they are just because we've seen their orders you know right. thing. we have a small group of guys there's only two people three people total who handle all the mail orders hmm. And they handle it themselves. So there's never a confusion. If somebody calls in, you know, one of them is always recognized. It, it, it makes for a smoother flow. And they, they handle everything, other than the packing and shipping. But the pulling and the dealing and the customer service and throwing an extra goodie in for somebody, that's all done by those three guys. Nice. Yeah, it keeps it in, in close-knit. That way you can keep track of everything and it makes it, yeah. makes it really nice. Um. And it, it's it's worked for us, yeah. you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, I had you brought up about the uh, Solaris, and I wanted to uh, touch base on you with some of your exclusives. Um, I know you have the Padron 1964 SI15, the My Father L. Hiho. I I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> El Hiho. Uh, the Fuente the Solaris and the uh, Anarchy. Um, I, I don't know if I missed any or not. Yeah, he's nope. got he's got the uh, La Trompeta by Avo too, I believe. That's not a micro bun. No, no, no. La, the La Trompeta by Avo was a national release, his annual right. release. Okay, across the country. No, that's all right, but it was still. So four. why don't you uh, uh, give some people some background on the cigars, if you could, and you know, I know some of them are sold out online, and let us know if they're going to be back. Uh, basically what happened was um, the concept started it it really started a few four or five years ago when I had trademarked the name Microblends Microblend series because I had this idea I wanted to do cigars like microbreweries same concept Mm -hmm. and uh, where you know they could use smaller quantities better quantities and be more consistent and make one batches or certain small batches of stuff where Hey, when you smoke this cigar eight months from now, it's the exact same product you smoked when you first got the first box, you know? So I did that before as a company, I was ready to have a national micro blend series. So that trademark sat in the cabinet collecting dust for years. Then um, I had my 15th anniversary coming up, wanted to do something really special. And uh, every year when Pete would have his monster series release, it was like anarchy, and that's why I called it. It was just ridiculous. I couldn't make everybody happy, and even when I tried to come up with ways to, you know, l- last year I thought I was being kind of really neat and said, look, we were going to hide the 22 boxes all over our website, you know, and if you found, I mean, buried anywhere. It could have been on a humidor page, on a sidecar page, and if you found it, you got to buy it. And, you know, my programmer spent eight hours making that happen, <laughs> Where a contest had lasted 18 minutes. Yep. 
I thought this thing would last five days. <laughs> there were people who were still unhappy. So, you know, it, it was a mess. So I said, look, I'm going to come out with this cigar for my video. I'm going to call it Anarchy. And I'm going to make it special, but I'm going to make sure that there's enough that anybody who wants one can get one. And um, unlike, and, and, and this was partially thanks to Pete. He wanted it at a right price, so it wasn't going to be a $20 limited release, right. you know. And uh, we came out with Anarchy, which was phenomenally successful. I mean, uh, he, they, the Garcia family and Pete produced a great cigar for us. Uh, uh, we marketed it very well because for the longest time, we didn't let anybody know who, there it is. For the longest time, we didn't let anybody know what it was about. In the beginning, people thought it was clothing. Pete was starting a rock band. Yeah. 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 Teaser video. I yeah, I do too. Yep. And, you know, eventually we released it, and everybody was very happy with it. And it, put, it kind of put us on the map with, with micro-blending, you know, making blends. And at that time, um, I had the great smoke coming up, and I was meeting with Padrones, and... Uh, I was talking with George about making us a Padron for our 15th anniversary. And after I saw the second content, that's when I got the idea, you know what, I'm just going to call this Micro Blend Series. And they've gone so well, I, my initial thing was I was going to do four. I think it's going to keep going. I think we're just going to continually produce these little batch runs for those who want them, try them. And when they're gone, they're right. gone, you know? And um, the... Uh, after the Padron, which was a you know fabulous hit, you know, um, and the Padrones are all gone, natural and Maduro. We had some naturals of the SI15, which was a six by sixty. Right. It was a six by sixty anniversary anniversary cigar that they had never made before, and um, I think we just sold out of the naturals like last week. So those are officially gone, but I think the Padrones like the size so well that they're coming out with it as a regular line sometime this year. Probably you'll see it at the trade show. Um, from there, we did the El Ijo, which was, you know, really turned out to be one of my favorites. Um, it's a nice box press cigar with some special wrapper that they had lying around. They had enough just to make us, I think we had something like 650 or 750 boxes that were made. And um, there's probably still about 100 of these boxes left. And um, this, the box press El Ijo was the third release. And, of course, what was supposed to come out last December was Solaris by Fuente, which is just coming right. now. And um, unlike with some of our other projects, with Fuente, we really didn't have no say in the blend. You know, with Pete, you know, there's a back and forth. He keeps in the cigars. And I'm going through that process right now with Apocalypse. But uh, we didn't really have a say in the Fuente blend. You know, I approached Fuente, and, you know, Fuente really doesn't do projects like this. Mm -hmm. And I showed them some of the work we'd done with our other micro blends, and they came back to us and said, look, there was this batch of cigars that have been sitting here that uh, Carlos Sr. had made, and there are these bellicoso sun growns. There was a lighter shade, wrapper and shade. And they've been sitting here, and they've never done anything with them. If you'd like them, you could use them for a micro blend. So this was great. We had plenty of time, and um, we originally had one idea of what we are going to do in packaging. They were going to come like in, in an international 858 box and so-so. But, you know, Fuente is very particular of how they want their finished product to look <laughs> I'm telling you, he made five or six changes after everything was made. I actually had made labels. I paid for labels that were going to go on the inside lid when you flip the box. They never even used them. <laughs> Changed the whole box completely. <laughs> but, you know, they made a very nice package. I, you guys seen the press pictures. They made a very nice yeah. package. Again. Um, and we got some of the cigars off for you guys to smoke and try. And um, so far, there's been three reviews on them. And, uh, you know, it's not like anything else has been in any of our other micro blends. So most of our micro blends have been very potent, very bold, full-bodied, spicy smokes, Nicaraguan smokes, you know. Um, this is a Dominican cigar that's been sitting around for six years. And even though it's sun-grown, it's mellowed out. But it's very complex in flavor still. I mean, there's so many little nuances. Without being bold and strong, you know, it borders, really borders the lower end of medium, you know, depending on your right. palate. Yep. But very unique smoke. And people who are Fuente fans, I think, are going to go ballistic for it. And especially those who age their cigars. Because I know I got a few customers who won't even smoke a cigar. They haven't sat in their locker for at least a year or two. Yeah. So, you know, it'll really appeal to those. And being that there was only, like, I think 550 boxes made, um, I think a fourth of them are already gone online pre-orders. So I, this one, I think, is going to... 
disappear the quickest out of all our micro blend series. Wow. Speaking of sitting uh, sitting around in your locker in a year, we were just talking pre-show, and you were talking about the anarchy, how you said that you think now a year later they're even better than they were when they first released. I think the anarchies now are way better. They, I, I, it's just melded into a much better quality cigar. And I don't know if it's just me that I, I you know, because, you know, when we first get them out, that's all I'm smoking for the, like a month, sure. you know? Sure. That's my my cigar. I'm all happy. I'm proud. I'm excited. That's all I'm smoking. And then I move on to the next project. Once you get. So I don't know if it's I haven't because I haven't smoked it in so long. And then I went back to try them. But I actually heard that from a few of my other patrons. So I I think Pepin's product typically will get better with age. I think I don't know if it's if it doesn't sit long enough before it hits the market or whatnot. But I think most of his cigars I enjoy after I know they've sat for a while. Uh-huh. And the Anarchy is smoking better than ever. Nice. So if you guys it. haven't tried it, go buy it. Get over there while they're still around. Hey, hey let's take a, ch- a question from the chat room. Uh, if someone wants to know, Matt wants to know, what prompted you to turn from selling cigars to having them made? Just creativity. You know, it, it's really fun putting a cigar project together. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you've seen the Apocalypse site for the... We're, we're doing a sequel to Anarchy, which is going to be released in uh, this December. It's called Apocalypse, based, you know, themed on the Mayan calendar, right. you know, yep. December 11th, the end of the world, December 21st, the end of the world, or whatever it is. And if you look at our site, it's real intricate, you know. And mm-hmm. some people said, ah, oh, that's hokey, or, but it's fun. You know, we made a theme about it, you know, and, and creating is exciting for us, you know, and... Um, that's really what was the motivation. You know, I mean, look, there's enough great cigars out there. Right. Huh? No one needs me making another blend to add to the mix. I mean, there's mm-hmm. plenty of them. But it's just fun for us. Sure. You know, I mean, it's just a, another plus of being in this injury to say, hey, I can get it together with a guy like Pete or George Padron or Matt Booth and come up with a blend and a package and a theme and throw it out there. Mm-hmm. and. For the most part, guys enjoy them, and the guys who will follow them will, will, and the guys who don't, there's not that many boxes, so they go, and it's over. Right. So can we expect a micro blend from uh, JD? You know, (laughs) we've talked about it. We've worked about it. Those are two really, really busy guys. You're not kidding. They really, really are. And, you know, you know, I don't, you know, what I don't want is I don't want just a size. Right. You know, and, you know, Jonathan wanted to make me a size for his Uzi. Uh, you know, I, I want to help create something. You know, and I have a couple of concepts. They're two really, really, really busy guys, but they are they are on my hit list of guys to work with and get to. And they're my closest friends. Mm-hmm. I at both their weddings. You know, so it's funny. But eventually, when we when we do get together, I think it's gonna be perfect. You know, it'll be just right. So nice. they're on my hit list of guys to work with. Cool. Awesome. Now, do you think having your own blends uh, helps your stores and your internet sales and, and promotes more of the products that you carry? Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. When, when Anarchy was released, um, it put us on. I mean, we slowly, through phases, have gotten national exposure it all really began with drew estate when they released the first ming cigar and used my image it was supposed to be a cigar exclusively from my store and they ended up taking nationally and um they used my image and i think uh ci used the the ad with my image on it on the front cover one of their catalogs one month not knowing that i was a retailer and i was in the business it was kind of funny um and everybody's like what's abe doing on the cover of ci Yeah, I mean, um, it, and that started, and then, um, you know, a few other things, but Anarchy really put us on the map, because everybody heard about it, and Pete has such a distinct following, yeah. that word spread rapid fire, and then when people found out, there were other, I mean, the poor guy's office got inundated with calls from other retailers, how do I get this cigar, my customers are talking about the cigar, and um, same thing with El Ijo, so these micro blends do really put us in a national spotlight, and especially because of our good relationships with guys in the media and the bloggers and guys like you guys that, you know, we send the cigars out, you guys review them, good, bad, or indifferent, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it gets us out there. And it all adds up. So, you know, we don't mind being in the spotlight. You know, we always try to make it as positive as possible. 
but yeah, the micro blends have really been a boost in in getting our national pr- footprint larger. Nice. Let's see. Tank says he wants to know how many new cigars do you see a month? Oh. oh. <laughs> how many how many new cigars do I bring in, or how many new cigars do I see? He says C, so uh, let's let's go with C. Being in Florida, there's somebody making a brand every week. Yeah. Every week, somebody's coming in. Well, my favorite is, well, you got the walk-ins who, you know, I kind of got to give them props. They're in their car, driving around. But my favorite is these blatant emails to, you know, info at smoking.com. Hi, we're the makers of new so-and-so. We'd like to get products in your store. We get two or three of those a week. So it's very prolific, and that's not including the new stuff that's coming from the manufacturers we deal with every week. I mean, I think we just sent a cigar alert. We send a cigar alert out almost every week, every other week. And I think this last cigar alert had five new products on there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's constantly uh, between between the TAA cigars and regular line cigars. I mean, we just got the new Airbender uh, TAA cigar from La Florida that just came in. Yep. You know, new sizes of Domus Magnus, uh, the, the, the new... The new uh, Coup d'etat, uh, howitzer. So a lot of stuff is constantly coming in. I, I think I think that's the hardest thing for a retailer today is to balance the inventory to try to shift out the old as quickly as you're trying to bring in the right. new. Yep. I think that's really one of the most difficult things for today's retailer. Yep. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit, Abe, about your smoking in hot weekly deals. Now, that deal, is it one deal for the whole week? Does it change daily? Is it just a, is, is it every week? Changes every week. It's from Friday noon to the next Friday noon. Okay. And uh, we usually will write something that's themed, uh, you know, when Santorum went out. When, you know, uh, there's always some political theme or social theme that's tied to it. And it's basically just a good sampler of things that, one, we're either closing out and want to move out at a good price or stuff that we just want to sample and get out there for our consumers to try. And... Um, you know, it, it's it's also a way for us to host, hopefully we build new new clients. Guys will see that sample and say, "Wow, let me try that." And once we acquire them as a customer, hopefully we'll keep them. So, but we enjoy doing that. If, if you look at our, there are guys who don't buy or have never bought. I have a lot of local. The hot weekly deals are only available online. So if you come in my store, you can't order a hot weekly deal. Uh-huh. Okay? And. Um, I got a lot of guys who look forward to them every week without ever buying one because just like reading it and looking at the story. So it's become like our little political cartoon parody uh, center. Yeah, hey, I'm looking at it. You make a pretty good Charlie Chan. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a Charlie <laughs> Chan movie. Oh, uh, I was with our web guy for about 30 minutes trying to make myself look somewhat Chinese. <laughs> well, you did good. <laughs> So it looks like our looks like our our, our queue is high, Mike. Are we good to go? Are we well, okay? I see the chat room saying it, got a little bump. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's still going, but it, everybody's saying it's a little jerky. The the queue is up in the red here. Uh, the recording's fine. Everything's right. going fine on this end. It's just uh, even the okay. data rate's fine. I I don't understand why the queue's so high unless they're having problems out there on the on the internet. Yeah. That's the nice thing, folks, with going live. Some things you just can't control. Shit happens. So, uh, well, let's continue on, Mikey. Uh, let's see, Abe. Let's take a question from BD Cigar Smoker. He wants to know, when is the radio sh- show coming back and any plans to branch out to other stations? Well, here's the thing. We took this month off for a couple of reasons. Um, I had to get away right now. I'm actually transmitting from somewhere in uh, South Carolina. And um, I had to get away for a few weeks. And... Uh, we've been approached by X7 Cirrus. So we're revamping the show a little bit. Um, it's going to be very more cigar-oriented. We're going to come back the first week of June, Saturday. Um, we're dropping some of the, you know, we got some advice from the reps over at Cirrus and what, what they'd look for to pick mm-hmm. us up as their station. Um, we had a political segment. You know, we had a little sports segment. We had a little uh, Ask Lady M segment. All those are going to be gone. It's going to be more of a cigar-based theme show all the way around now. Okay. And um, like a new section that we're adding cigar pairings, Adam K will uh, pair something every week, whether it be root beer and this cigar or yep. Ben Livet senior with this cigar, and take pairing suggestions from mm-hmm. our listeners and share them with listeners. So there's going to be a pairing section. There's going to be a cigar etiquette section. 
But we're gonna, we have a section we're gonna, we're gonna call AP Cigars, Advanced Placement Cigars, because we don't want to call it Cigars 101, because we listened to the Cigar Dave show one day, and uh, two of the callers that called in, one was, what does a ring gauge mean? And the other guy said, my cigars are unraveling, and you think it's because I don't have a humidor. So we thought we'd make this a little more advanced placement questions than beginner questions, because we believe most of our listeners are pretty much beyond that stage of uh, right, right. knowledge. So right, right. Um, we're looking forward to coming back strong with the show, and I think with this new format, uh, it'll be a matter of hopefully a couple months before we can get a crack at really going national on XM Series. The show started as a little hobby. In fact, Clear Channel came to me uh, and said, you know, we have this open salon Saturday. Are you interested in the cigar show? And I had no, no, you know, even though I have a face for radio, <laughs> I have no will to do a cigar show. I had the time in my head in life to do a cigar show like I need a hole in that. <laughs> um, but it just happened two of my guys, uh, you know, uh, Brandon the Mac and Adam Kay, both had worked for Clear Channel, and Adam's actually major with broadcast communications. So they actually talked me into it. So we started with one hour, and the thing just took off. Yeah. It just took off like wildfire. And then we were looking for another hour, and Clear Channel couldn't provide us with another hour without going earlier in the morning. And we didn't really even want to start at 8 in the morning. So uh, we went to another station, CV Radio. We're on from uh, 10 to 12, which is a great time for us. And what really makes us stand out is every week we got somebody in the industry on the show. We've had everybody so far you could think of on the show. And it's a lot of fun. And I think what we're going to do is try and move to have them come more in the studio. Because whenever we get them in the studio for the whole two hours, it's a lot more fun of a show. Sure. It really is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next thing you know, we're having fun. So, look, at the end of the day is there's not a day I get up where I say I don't want to go to work. That's what it's all about. Man. We have fun, and that's what we try to have with our clientele. Yeah. You know, I came up with a slogan, you know, continuing the cigar journey like no other. Because that's what I believe. Right. It's the journey. Yeah. And my job is to help all my patrons and friends along this journey and make it the best as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're the same way. You know, I've always, when we first started doing this, you know, we, everybody was like, well, what, what do you think about this competition? I said, listen, it's, it, there's no competition. We're all cigar lovers. We're all looking to, to help each other. And we all have our own little niche. Everybody's got something different. And uh, it's just like you said, every twice a month, because we do it twice a month, we get to have people such as yourself and other folks in the industry and, and our fans who may not get to go to events get to literally sit here and, and communicate with you. Matter of fact, starting very soon, they're going to be able to call into our show. We're actually going to have that feature now that we don't very have. Very cool. And uh, it's really nice. It's nice to have live interaction, especially with video, where the people can sit back and ask you questions that they may not get the answer to somewhere else. So yeah. I agree with you. It's totally about helping each other out. It's not about competition. It's not about none of that crap. And uh, we wish you nothing but success over there. We hope uh, everything takes off for you over there. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. And like you said, it's all about having fun. Absolutely. You know, this is one of the friends. If, if you don't get along in this business, you really don't get it, in my opinion. Exactly. You know? You know, the, the, the one manufacturer who's out there who doesn't like anybody is always complaining about everybody. He's a guy who really doesn't get right, it. Right, right. Because most of these guys, and I've seen it. I've seen them help each other out. Guys, tobacco burns down. Hey, do you need tobacco? Do you need a place to store your tobacco? Mm. You know, these guys help each other out. And the ones that get it are the ones who really are going to prosper because they get what this industry is about. I agree with you. 100%. Yeah, and I do have to agree. Everybody's saying uh, better make sure that Lady M stays on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lady M ain't going anywhere. <laughs> She's half our material. That goes back to me up. there when we asked her what. <laughs> well, I can't remember. It was a high school question, but she. What was it? Name. name what was North America? It was some basic question. We cracked up. We left for days. Oh, the best. I'm going to give you guys a little preview of the next dummy dialer on the next show. Okay. okay. This is great. You guys are going to love this. Listen to this. We're going to play it on the next radio show. But Lady M, during this month, is booking all new people. So we're flipping through, I think it was a aficionado or something, and there's a picture of Zeno Davidoff. And she goes, who's that? I said, like, Zeno Davidoff. She goes, well, how come he's on the show? Well, I tell you what, he's just impossible to get. 
you know, if you can get him on the show, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Just make it two hundred. You got a deal. I said, done. So well, how am I going to get money? I said, well, why don't you call Davidoff's store in, in, in New York and see what you can do? So she calls the Davidoff store asking for Zeno Davidoff. <laughs> Dude, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And she obviously, the guy's like, well, coincidentally, the guy who answered the phone, his name is Lino. Uh huh. So she's asking for Zeno. He goes, no, I'm Lino. No, no, I'm looking for Zeno. No, no, I'm Lino. <laughs> no, Zeno. You mean Zeno Davidoff? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zeno Davidoff's dead. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, he's the founder of Dad. He died like years ago. He's dead? <laughs> Dude, he's just hilarious. So how can you get real Lady M, you know? He's just great. He's a good sport, you know? He's a good sport. Oh, That's great. Now, uh, I also wanted to bring up, I, I saw something on your site. I thought it was really cool. Um, uh, I call him a friend, uh, Brian Glynn over at Cigar Obsession. I see you have a sampler pack of his top 10 cigars. I thought yep. that was something neat. I've never really seen that before where a blogger and a, and a site got together to, to do this. I can't take any credit for that. <laughs> that was all Brian. You know, Brian came and he said, look, I've been thinking about doing this. Is this something you think you could do? I said, absolutely. I said, we'll even make your own label for him and everything. You know, and how do you want to work it out? You know, and there's no, I just really want to do this, you know. And um, he came up with his top 10, labeled it. We put his review on his link on our site. And let me tell you something. He has done a phenomenal, when I say a phenomenal job of, of like, we, I, I don't know what the exact number is, but it's blo it blew me away, the volume of how many people had bought that sampler. And it still sells today. So now uh, Brian's working on a, a second sampler that's not so premium because that was a very premium right, sample, right. you know and you know we give an extra special price on it and offer free shipping for any of his you know fans but it was really his idea and it worked out very very well you know uh, he's a very uh, sharp guy and uh, made a nice package and we were really happy to work with him on it but you know between me and you you know a couple of years ago we got happy to start dealing with the bloggers you know and that was only because we were just ourselves getting knowledgeable with the Facebook and the Twitters and bloggers and whatnot. And um, for the most part, everybody we deal with in, in, in that world is very nice and down to earth, right. you know, um, very easy to deal with. And uh, we, we enjoy it. We enjoy it for the most part, you know, mm -hmm. and we send them samples of like our Solaris or whatever. When they start Twittering, how excited they are, something came in. It's great. It makes us feel good. You know, it's good we can create that kind of excitement. In the stream. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, like I said, it goes back to the fun of creating and making brands and doing stuff. You know, there's only so many times I could, you know, a guy could ring a, a till, you right. know, or sell a star. But it's not just for me, my whole organization. Because the guys who work for me are all really passionate guys. You know, I really don't think you could survive at smoking if you weren't really passionate about cigars. You mm -hmm. know, customer service, but... These projects keep these guys going. They get excited and they get proud that they're involved in them. You know, so it just has an overall positive effect all the way around. It really does. That's good. Let's see. Let's take another question from the chat room. Uh, we got the: How does Abe choose what he's going to bring in, and does he try everything he brings in? Well, any salesman. <laughs> Any salesman who's ever walked through the store can tell you that typically I won't even smoke a cigar they give me. Because for the most part, look, there's a, there's a reality involved here in that I probably don't smoke 50% of the stuff that's in my humidor. It's just not my flavor profile. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end, I'm not here to sell what I like only. You know, I'm here to provide my clientele, my patronage, an experience of what they're looking for, which sometimes is outside my flavor profile. Right. So when a guy comes in and tries to tell me how great the cigar is, well, that's how great he thinks the cigar is. Right. And even if I think it's great, doesn't mean anybody might want it. You know? Mm -hmm. So there really is no rhyme or reason. We try to stay, we try to have our ears to the ground and hear when there's a good buzz out there. 
sometimes sometimes we take a new brand because strictly just good our relationship with the manufacturer. You know, we got a great relationship with them. They're launching something new. We're going to bring it in and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we have our, our ear to the ground and we hear a buzz about something. I say, you know what? I think this is going to be a good brand. And a perfect example of that, which we did, was San Latano. Yeah. And I got to give my sales that sales rep a lot of props because he came in, he didn't pester me, he stood on the side, he never hard pressed me. All he did was, you know, they they always ask me, can I give cigars to the guys? Yeah, absolutely. I'm never one. Of, I'm never one of these retailers that says, no, don't give them cigars because they may not buy a cigar. Right. You know, you know give them whatever you want. So he passed out a bunch of cigars. He gave me one. I smoked the oval. I thought it was a good cigar. The guy sitting there thought it was a good cigar. You know, and I went to my operations manager, Michael Wallstrom. And I said, listen, man, I, I think it's going to be a good cigar. You know, I like it. And, you know, I always like it when I find something like that that I know none of my competition in my area have gotten on board. Right. Because then I could be the first to have it and they don't have it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we bought it in, and sure enough, it's been a big hit. And, the San Latino line has been doing very, very well. Great smoke. And, yeah. and that's the experience I've had. And, yeah. you know, sometimes we hit on something that's a complete flop. So there's no there's no rhyme or reason to it. I can't say that I only bring in the stuff that I think is good because then I wouldn't have half the product I have. Right. And half the product I have sells to other people. So, you know, there's no really science to it, you know. Yeah. Like I said, the skill is moving out the dead stuff. You know, retailers are going to let something sit on their shelves for two years that hasn't sold. Is not making room for new stuff that he needs to bring right. in. That, that's what's going to kill a retailer. Yeah. You keep the balance of moving out the dead and bringing in the new, you'll be all right. Yeah. Now, uh, Matt, Matt had brought something up I was going to ask you also. Uh, he wants to know what kind of cigars do you tend to smoke? And along with that, other than your specific uh, blends that you have for your store, what are some of your favorite smokes right now? Um, I'm pre- my flavor profile really predominantly is Nicaraguan. I, I like Padron cigars. I like the Liga cigars when I can get them. If you're listening, Marvin and John. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, that, that's my flavor profile. Now, um, I like Dominican stuff as well, but mostly I, I, I smoke Padrones. I, I smoke uh, Drew Estates. I, I smoke Nick stuff. I think Nick makes a great product, especially for his price line. Uh, you know, the Habano is still one of my favorite cigars. Um, but I change a lot. You know, thank God when you got a, a selection you can choose from every day. I'm not stuck. And I'll give you a perfect example. You know, I'm sitting here in North Carolina, and we ordered the Rocky to tell edition Unica, the limited edition, the one that they claim one Humo Jaguar. There's the whole right. you know, story behind whether that was the one or the Humo Jaguar one that Miami Cigars had. But either way, we must have got 10 or 12 of those 100-count boxes in. They went so fast, I never tried one. <laughs> they, I never, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I don't get to try because if I don't have enough for my clientele, I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, I'm thinking... Because now I really like it. I'm going to want a box or two. Right, right. So I don't get to try them. So I never tried one. And I'm here, and this guy's got to have a box sitting here in the humidor. In fact, that's where I'm recording from right now. It's a cigar shop. And uh, I've been smoking them since I've been here. I actually like it. It's not a, not a bad cigar. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I have a very large, large selection to choose from. You know, and every now and then, I'll pick up something ultra mild, uh, you know, like a champagne or a Davidoff to enjoy. Right. So it's it's a, it's like a it's like anything else. You know, nobody wants lobster or filet mignon every day. Nope. You, know, you switch it up if you go with your mood. That's true. And it's very nice to revisit a cigar sometimes if you haven't smoked in two years. Yes. Two or three years. You go back and go, wow, man, now I remember why I like that cigar. I forgot. Yep. Yep. So fun, but I remember why I like that cigar. Yep. So it happens. It happens. Yep. I'd always try to go back to my, one of my old favorites was the Partagas Black. You know what? I've always said that was the best, probably, new release that General has ever had. I don't know if General, I mean, not to knock him, it's just facts. I don't know if General has had a decent release or as good as a new product line that's ever come out other than Partagas Black. So that has stood the test of time. 
has lasted, hasn't faded away after a year or two of being on the shelves. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's done very well. So mm-hmm. there you go. There you have it. Well, let's see. Uh, I know Tank had a question. Oh, you want to know, how are the ratings over at Kiss, Kiss My Ash right now? You know, the rating system is, you know, well, there's, there's, there's very few ways on where we can really actually tell. You know, they have their, I forget what they call it, but their system where they have like five old people walking around with a thing on their belt and picks up what they're listening to. So it's not really verifiable. We know because of the callers. Yep. You know, the callers that we get in are 90% of the time out of state. So they're listening to us in Kentucky, New York. We've had guys call from California. We had guys call from Israel during the show. Wow. So we know through our website, who are listening through our website, when they're listening to our site, where they're coming from. So we don't know what ratings are. Yep. We know we're very popular locally. We know we're very popular at the station. When we're not on, we get a plethora of calls, and the station gets calls. So, you know, and I think the true test is if Sirius will pick us up. If Sirius mm-hmm. will pick us up, that means... We actually had sufficient interest, and hopefully we can keep it interesting on a national, on a national basis. Cool. You know? Yeah. Let's see. Tom wants to know, when's the new studio going to be, uh, when are you going to start doing it The uh, in studio? That's going to be in the new Boynton building, and uh, I just heard from the developer today, because they're building this, the freestanding building. So they actually had to build it. Um, they're... they're Looking on schedule, which means the beginning of June, the first week of June, they're supposed to turn over the building to me. We're probably going to need about three or four months to do our work inside, building the humidor, lights, bar, set up, all that kind of stuff. So probably I'm going to guess our first broadcast live out of uh, Smoke in Boynton Beach will probably be uh, in October. Okay. Well, there you go, Tom. About October, he says. And I think that's where it's really going to get fun. I mean, I know you guys experience what you do and you have fun. Now imagine doing it in front of 30 guys smoking cigars, you know? Yep. And, and right now, at least you guys can sit there and smoke where you guys were going, but we can't smoke in our studio where we're at. Right. We've got to talk about it and then smoke after the show, but it's not the same, you know? Yeah, it is It, it is nice being able to smoke and not have oh, to worry about anything. Hey, So we're really looking forward to that board in the studio. We really are. Yeah. Cool. Uh what do you got, Mike? Anything? No, that's that's all I had on my list. Just sitting there looking sexy. He's like, I'm just gonna look sexy. I was I was looking at the the chat. The the queue okay. has freaked like, out again here. But uh, no, uh, I like the green backdrop. Y- you like that? Ain't that sexy? It's awesome. <laughs> A little horror horrorish, but you know, it looks better than what we had there, Abe. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> You look like you're in like a penthouse dick in the studio. I, I, I'm in a, a pimp daddy uh, studio. Yes, I will say that. <laughs> I am in my home Mac Daddy studio, thanks to my lovely wife, who's very understanding. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Uh, but, I'm um, in my basement. Look, what you guys do is great. <laughs> I give a lot of props. You're in your basement. <laughs> Listen, I give a lot of props to what you guys do. You thanks. know, I really do. You, you, and you know the bloggers and. All you guys out there, you guys put a lot of your personal time and efforts in this. And most of you guys don't do this for a living. No. Not make grab loads of money. If, if no. make any money at all. No. <laughs> it's, it really is. It's a real testament. And I think that your fans know it. And, it, you know, they don't tell you it. They really should, man. It's, it's You guys who take the time to review a cigar every week, you know, or even multiple times a week and put it online and make plan to do a show. I mean, I know what it's like planning on doing my shows when I got two or three people helping me. So I can only imagine on top of your all the other stuff. It's a testament to you guys. So I personally want to thank you guys and I hope your fans take the time to do the same. Thank you. Thank we you. Appreciate it very much. Now uh Abe, is there anything that we did not touch on that you wanted to uh talk about? Uh as far as us personally, you know, me personally, uh no, you pretty much covered everything. I mean obviously we got uh, the second installment to Anarchy coming up this December. Right. Uh, if you want more information or get, make sure you don't miss any information, yeah, you should probably visit www.tatuaheanarchy.com. All the updated information is there, and we'll be coming soon as we get closer to finalizing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Matt Booth and I are having fun right now, and uh, we're going to be working on, a, I think, a m- micro-blend project that we're going to call... Uh, 
you know, it's kind of leaked out there a little bit. We haven't really talked too much about it, but uh, it's going to be called Big Delicious. That's his nickname for me, Big Delicious. So we're going to come out with uh, probably a micro blend project we're going to call uh, Big BD or Big Delicious. We haven't finalized it yet. So, nice. And I think, uh, I think what we're going to do is, um, you know, in, in my continual efforts to have fun doing stuff, we're going to probably develop a Big Delicious website and uh, have actually a cartoon made, a weekly cartoon of our adventures in developing the brand. That would be so, cool. You know, comically, down in Chicago, you know, you know, me getting stuck in the lavatory in the plane and the jaws of life having to come get me out <laughs> and we would go down to Nicaragua or stuff like that until we finally release the line. Listen, it's always good to keep people something to go, you know, look forward yes. to. And that's what it was about. In the original Anarchy release, um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to see it on the website, but there was a new world riot we'd post on a globe every week. And there was a globe that turned, and every week there'd be a new green dot every couple of weeks. And it started out in Sydney and went to New Delhi. It, uh, when you clicked on the city, it showed you a riot scene and what happened. And it was always somehow tied into anarchy cigar. You know, there was a taste and it got out of control and the store burned down. And then somewhere in each one of those riot scenes, I was super impressed. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like a Waldo thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make a good product. If you don't make a good product, it doesn't matter how much fun you have. So, yeah. luckily, we've right. worked with some very talented people who didn't treat our microblend project like a to-do list item and really took pride in making something really good for us. So, it's worked out very well for us. Good. Yeah, that's great. That's what I got to stop it for. Why? Yeah, stop. yeah exactly. I'm just going to let it roll and just Making successful products. Yeah. Tank wants to know, he says, I don't know if this is a joke or not, but I'm going to ask you. He said, to tell us about the San Latano story. You must Who have a story. This? Who said this? Tank. Tank997 said, have him tell us about the San Latano story. He's got to specify because I'm not sure which story. He said he's not sure. Tank. He can hear you. So. Oh. He's not sure, Tank, what story you're talking about. Oh, you want? Hey, we got a question. Why we're why we're waiting? Uh, a B, uh, BD wants to know when's the next big smoke event. The big smoke is typically done every February, and it's usually done um, the Saturday after Valentine's Day. So whatever Valentine's Day falls, uh, that fourteenth, it's usually done the Saturday after. So it's typically the twenty second, twenty, whatever, uh, whatever that Saturday falls. And uh, this year was our biggest one ever. I mean, we had like two thousand bodies there, and we gave away a. It was a Based on our 15th anniversary, we gave away a Chevy Camaro, and it was a, a fabulous, fabulous time. So it's been getting bigger and better. Our only point at this point, what we're looking at is if we don't know next year, we might do it where our new corporate Boynton store will be. Mm -hmm. We just have to really assess if the center can handle the parking or not. And we haven't made that final decision. But most likely, it'll probably be in West Palm Beach again next February. And um, for those of you in or in and around the Florida area who are poker players, this May 19th, we have our seventh. I think it's our seventh annual smoking series of poker. We have a big poker uh, game every May, and it's 15 manufacturers. They all have their own table. Uh, I know for a fact, I think Marvin and Jonathan are going to come and play, or at least Marvin is. And uh, one manufacturer from every table is playing. And the winner we send to Vegas to play in the big game. We give them five days, four nights airfare, wow. hotel stay, and um, the $10,000 seat in the World Series of Poker. And the deal is is they have to wear the shirt of the company who the table they started out at. Sure. They have to wear a smoking hat and hold the cigar of the manufacturer who they won from any time they're sitting there play at the, at the, at the tournament. Yeah. So uh, we've been doing this for seven years now, and uh, that's coming up May 19th. And anybody who wants more information on the poker tournament, just visit uh, www.smokeinseriesofpoker.com. Or you can just go to regularsmoking.com, go to the events page, and there's a link for each of those individual sites at the top of that events page. We'll make yeah. sure, Abe, when we uh, we put this up on our site, we'll have the links for everything that you need. And cool. uh, it'll already be on there. Tank said you already answered the question, so you already told the story. Forget it. But we got this new thing now. We're going to have to ask you. We started it, what, last show with Jose Blanco. And uh, it seems like now the, the chat yeah. room has made this an annual thing now. we got to ask. So uh, it's basically the deathbed question, Abe. The deathbed question is this. You're on your deathbed. What's your what's your last cigar? Wow. And we're not we're we're not wishing you death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You know, it's really funny because it's a tough question. I think most of the times you're going to you tie a cigar into a moment or experience you're having as well mm-hmm. as to how much you enjoyed yeah. it. And um, I think, and I, I know, I you know, I think it was a Punch Black Prince. And it, it was this limited edition Habano cigar they had made. It's a, it was like a Corona Gordon size, and the cigar was just absolutely magnificent. I mean, I think the last I heard, there was like 10 boxes left in the world, and somebody I knew gifted me one, and it was a phenomenal cigar. And we were having a, like, a stellar night that night, too. So like I said, it's probably a combination, but that cigar really was amazing. Amazing cigar. So if I had a choice, that's the one it'd be. And of course, it goes to the fact that you can't get them. <laughs> you know, you know, you're gonna tell like, the guy what cigar you want. You're gonna want the ones you know you just can't get. So, you know, can't find them. Can't get them. That's right. That might be a good choice though, because then you you can tell them you have to keep me alive until you can find that cigar so I can smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It really was a good cigar. And I have two sticks left that you know. You, you try to say you save them for a special occasion. It's hard to decide what's worth it. But I still have two of the original release 150s left. Personal. Wow. Now, I have a, a, a 10 box set of the original release cigars in boxes still. Um, but those are going to go um, in our Boynton uh, location, in our Boynton store that we're opening up. We're actually going to have a regular size humor, and then we're going to have the vintage room. It's going to be nice. a key entry pad room. That's off. You know, you have to go in the humidor and then go to another room. Mm-hmm. But that's just going to be all super rare, ultimate stuff that I've collected over the years and hidden and stashed away. That either haven't been made for years, aren't made anymore, or you just can't find anymore. Cool. So the, the, that set of 150s original release I have is going to go in that room. Nice. But I have two sticks personally for me that uh, I'm saving. Those are those are really good. All right. Right. Well, Abe, we're at our hour, bud. Is there anything you want to anything you want to say before we get done with the show here? And I want to personally thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule um, to come on our show. We're really honored to have you on, and uh, we welcome you back anytime. And especially your own vacation, I guess. You, you even came on when your own vacation. Yeah, it's all right. You got to do what you got to do. It wasn't a planned vacation, and we had to schedule, so I wasn't going to cancel on you boys. Thank you. We and, appreciate it. Uh, Absolutely. And listen, the only thing I do want to say for anybody, and I know you guys have mentioned it all the time, is uh, anybody who's listening, get involved, sign the petitions, get behind what the CRA is doing. Absolutely. I mean, it's you got to act now because it's hard to act when it's too late. Yeah. So, you know, I know we got over the 25,000 petitions we needed for the government to uh, respond yeah. to the petition to exempt the premium cigars from FDA. But when you think about all the cigar smokers out there, it's really a pathetic number, yeah. you know. I mean, there's there's millions of us out there. Right. We need to take the time, a couple seconds out of our day, to voice our opinion. Because if you don't voice it, you're going to lose your rights. So that's the one thing I just want to preach again. I'm sure everybody's getting beat in their head. but And if you're doing it and you're being one of these guys who are doing the right thing, talk to 10 of your friends who aren't. Right, yep. Because I'm sure you know two or three of your buddies who are complacent and just ain't doing it. And get them to do it. Motivate them to take the time and do it. Because it's really, really important. Otherwise, we're going to lose something as an industry that's very special. Yep. The experience of walking into a cigar shop. So I mean, look, I've always said cigars are like sex, okay? You can do it alone, but it's much more better in company. <laughs> you know? Right, Mikey? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you're going to lose that special experience of walking into a cigar shop and sitting with five or six other good guys right, and yep. sharing stories and right. walking through a humidor and talking to your buddies, hey, what did you try, lady, that you like? It's going to disappear. Mm-hmm. So if you don't take your time to really make sure that not only you're doing your job, but the people around you are voicing their opinions, we're going to lose it. So that's all I could say that we haven't discussed at this point. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have no more questions for Abe. We're going to let him go back to... Uh, enjoying his vacation and again Abe thank you very much man and uh, nothing but success in, in smoking and everything you're doing and also with Kiss My Ass Radio and uh, like we said earlier Mike and I would be more than happy to come on anytime you want oh, we'll, and, uh, we'll arrange it you're also welcome back anytime you want here and it, it's been an absolute pleasure thanks yes. guys Appreciate thank you alright Abe take See it you easy later. buddy Good night. take care 
Alrighty, folks. I am by myself again. And, uh, yeah, I, I just want to, like Abe said, you really get the people to sign that petition. I mean, it's not much. I mean, we're not asking you to go out, you know, run to the White House, buy a plane ticket or anything else. But, you know, just, just go online, sign that petition, let people know that you're you're there and you actually you know agree with what's going on and, and you want to save your cigar smoking okay mike's back what you got mike all right no i agree with you definitely you got to tell like abe said you got to tell your friends you got to make it happen and uh just on a show note uh we're, we're still testing out the uh skype call-in uh, we were hoping to do it tonight, but we're gonna we're gonna push it back at least another month because we don't want to do it half ass. So hopefully by next month we will have the uh, the uh, Skype where you guys will be able to call in. And uh, Corey's saying both Phillies and Sox stink. Corey, I agree with you. I actually uh, don't even want to talk about it, but they do stink. And uh, just a reminder, show reminder that we overbooked this month, which is a good thing. We have another show this week, this Saturday. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Roma Craft will be on. Uh, so make sure you guys tune in and join us for that show. It should be another fun show. And, uh, again, as always, guys, we appreciate you taking time out of your night to spend it with us. And uh, it truly means a lot to us. So uh, and, yes, it uh, that's it. That's all I got. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And uh, we'll see you all on Saturday. Yeah, and thanks to everybody for the great questions again. It's, it's nice having those yep. questions coming in from the chat. And if you haven't, tell your friends about Stogie 411. Let's get this chat room booming now. Let's get more people in this chat room, guys. So tell everybody about us. Uh, the more the merrier. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you all on Saturday. So good night.